2020 code, they made a small little change to the definition of equipment grounding conductor. It's not a particularly substantial change, uh, but I think it's a good change nonetheless. It really emphasizes why we have this conductor. So the equipment grounding conductor is defined in Article 100 as part of the effective ground fault current path. Now, let's push pause for just one second here. Um, if you haven't already watched the video where I cover the definition of effective ground fault current path, uh, you might want to do that. The definition of the effective ground fault current path is a, uh, uh, a low impedance, intentionally constructed conductive path that connects normally non-current carrying metal parts to each other and back to the source so as to clear a ground fault by opening a circuit breaker or fuse. So the effective ground fault current path mainly consists of the equipment grounding conductor. That's certainly the, the biggest part, the backbone of the effective ground fault current path. But the effective ground fault current path also includes things like couplings and connectors and lock nuts, all of those being installed correctly and made up tight, fittings installed tightly and correctly. All of those things are part of the effective ground fault current path. The utility neutral uh, is part of a big part of the effective ground fault current path. So. The definition of equipment ground, it clarifies that it is part of the effective ground fault current path and it bonds the normally non-current carrying metal parts to each other and back to the neutral point or the grounding electrode system ultimately. Alright, so that is what the equipment grounding conductor is and does. It bonds metal parts together. Now, right off the bat, you're going to have people that say, well, it should be called an equipment bonding conductor or equipment bonding jumper. And, and, and I understand, uh, but that ship has probably sailed. There, were, there have been quite a number of proposals over the last 20 years to, uh, to make that happen. And in the 2008 code, it almost succeeded. They almost changed equipment grounding conductor to equipment bonding conductor. But here's the problem with doing that. The equipment grounding conductor bonds metal stuff together. Nobody's denying that, but it also connects things to the earth, doesn't it? The receptacles in your house are connected to each other and back to the source with an equipment grounding conductor. They're also ultimately connected to the dirt with that same wire, the equipment grounding conductor. So if you change the definition of equipment ground, uh, grounding conductor to equipment bonding conductor, then you're going to have the opposite people stomping their feet and saying, hey, what about the grounding portion of the conductor? It doesn't just bond, it grounds. And then you have the other people say, well, it doesn't just ground, it bonds. So what they did in the 2008 code is they said, listen, it does both. We all know it does both. We're not going to call it grounding and bonding conductor because, look, you either understand what it does or you don't. You can debate whether or not we should call it one thing or the other, but the fact of the matter is it does both. So the first informational note says, listen, the equipment grounding conductor also bonds equipment. It's not just grounding, it's bonding. The second informational note tells us that a list of the different types of equipment grounding conductors can be found in section 250.118. So let's take a quick peek at 250.118 and see what the different types of equipment grounding conductors uh, we can use. So number one is a wire. A copper aluminum or copper clad aluminum wire or a bus bar, it can be insulated, covered, bare. These green wires are the equipment grounding conductors. Certainly the most common type of equipment grounding conductors we have. Just, you know, a green or a bare wire. We can also use raceways, however. Uh, we can use riddle met, uh, rigid metal conduit, intermediate metal conduit, or EMT. So here in the photograph, we're using EMT as the equipment grounding conductor. That EMT is doing what? Bonding the normally non-current carrying metal parts of the equipment back to the source. If you take your meter and you get continuity between the raceway and the box, well then it has connected the two together, obviously. So we don't necessarily have to have a green wire inside of our raceway system. We can just use the raceway itself as the equipment ground. And I'm going to say something that's going to bother a lot of people here, but it's a fact nonetheless. <sighs> A metal raceway, right, EMT or RMC or IMC, let, let's stick with those. Those are better equipment grounding conductors as it relates to just the science. The impedance of those raceways is much lower than the impedance of a green or bare copper conductor. And that's just because of the size of the thing. Look, I know steel's not as good a conductor as copper is. I'm not saying that it is. 
but a giant piece of steel is a better conductor than a tiny piece of copper. And that's what we have here, right? So which do you think has less resistance? Four inch rigid or 14 gauge copper? You know, so believe it or not, we can mathematically show that a steel conduit is better, I say steel, steel or aluminum, is a better equipment grounding conductor than the green wire. Listen, if I'm installing, I'm gonna pull a green wire through there. Makes me sleep better at night, all right? Um, fittings have to be tightened, whether we have green wires inside of them or not. But the problem really gets exacerbated if we don't have a green wire. The fire at the MGM Grand Hotel was caused by uh, uh, some galvanic corrosion between a, an air conditioner's condensate line touching a piece of EMT that was being used as the equipment grounding conductor. And as we had the galvanic corrosion occur, that EMT kind of you know disintegrated away to nothing, and there was a ground fault in a in a deli uh, in, in a restaurant called the Deli at the MGM Grand. The fault current uh, went back to its source, ran into the corroded conduit, energized the conduit, ended up lighting the building on fire, and about 100 people died, and I think it was almost 800 people that were hospitalized due to smoke inhalation. I think you should put a green wire inside of your pipes, but it's not a requirement in the NEC. We can use rigid, we can use IMC, and we can use EMT as the equipment grounding conductor. Now, there are some instances where you might have to do something extra. Uh, 517.13 comes to mind if you're wiring healthcare facilities and you're in a patient care space. But just, you know, speaking in generalities, you don't need a green wire inside of your non-flexible raceway. Let's keep going. We can use flexible metal conduit as the equipment grounding conductor if you meet all of these criteria. A, you have to use listed fittings. You know what? That's not an option anyway. Go to 348.6 and it says they have to be listed. And all fittings that are listed are listed for grounding and bonding because that's part of the product standard. It's part of the test. You can only use flexible metal conduit as the equipment ground if you have a maximum 20 amp overcurrent device, maximum inch and a quarter trade size for the, uh, for the raceway itself, the total length of flexible metal conduit plus liquid type flexible metal conduit does not exceed six feet in the same ground fault current path. And E, flexibility is not needed after installation for vibration or movement. Okay, so looking at, these, at the picture here, do I need a green wire or a bare wire inside of those flexible metal conduits? Um, I don't know. It depends on how long they are. If these are less than six feet in length, and you're using a maximum 20 amp overcurrent device, then you do not need a green or a bare wire inside of that conduit. We have similar, similar uh, allowances for liquid tight flexible metal conduit. You have to use listed fittings. Again, that's always required. For 3 8 size, uh, 3 8 half and 3 quarter, beg your pardon, the maximum overcurrent device is 20 amps. For larger, up to inch and a quarter, you can go up to a 60 amp circuit breaker. As long as, once again, total length does not exceed six feet in the same ground fault return path, and E, flexibility is not needed after installation. Let's take a look at this picture here. If this raceway is one inch or inch and a quarter, I could have up to a 60 amp breaker, and I do not need a green wire inside of that raceway if this is no longer than six feet. That looks really close. But take a look down here at the bottom. We've got wheels on this thing. Flexibility is needed after installation. So that means you have to have an equipment grounding conductor of the wire type inside of that raceway. Number eight, we can use the combined armor and aluminum strip of type AC cable. All right, so looking at this picture, you know this is AC cable because it has paper, not plastic, and it's got a small uh, 16 gauge aluminum strip. So take that aluminum strip and cut it off. The combination of that strip touching the armor is your equipment grounding conductor. All right, so that bare wire, you don't have to do anything with it. You just cut it off its whole purpose in life is to decrease the impedance of the armor itself. So unless you rip it out, there's nothing you can do to change the fact that that little aluminum wire has already done its job. Its job is to touch the metal. 
So just cut it off. That's all you have to do. And that's not my opinion. That, that's a fact. That You don't have to terminate it. You don't have to wrap it around anything. You just cut it off because its purpose in life has, has, has finished the second it leaves the factory. You can use the copper sheath of mineral insulated cable. So here we've got some MI cable. Uh, as you can see, that copper is going to be a very good equipment grounding conductor. Item 10 is perhaps the trickiest, and that's MC cable. There's a couple of different types. So option A, if the MC cable contains an equipment grounding conductor of the wire type. Okay, so over here on the left, we've got a green wire. Perfect. We're done, right? Put the cable in, terminate the green wire just like you would any other equipment ground, and you're good to go. Or option B, the combined sheath plus bare conductor of interlocking metal tape MC cable. 99% uh, of the MC cable that we install is interlocking metal tape. If not, it's even a higher percentage, 99.9%. Uh, spiral interlocking metal tape, exactly what it sounds like, a big spiral of one long piece of tape. Um, much like AC cable, if it has a bare aluminum conductor inside of it, then the aluminum conductor plus the metal armor is your equipment grounding conductor. And just like with AC cable, cut it off because its purpose in life is over. Or item C, the metal sheath or combined sheath and equipment grounding conductor of the smooth or corrugated tube type MC cable. Those are uh, very rare indeed. So if you have smooth or corrugated tube MC cable, uh, that can be used as your equipment grounding conductor. But again, 99.9% uh, .9 of the MC cable that we install is all interlocking metal tape. As with any listed product, make sure you're following the instructions. So over here on the left, you have instructions for the cable and you can see, bend the bond wire back 120 degrees and cut it. So I'm not sure why it says 120 degrees. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, is it okay if you do 90 or 180 and then cut it? I mean, you're cutting it, right? But most importantly, item four says, select approved MCI-A connector of correct size. All right, so this over here on the right is the connector and you can see it says MCI-A. So that would be metal clad interlocking tape. A is for the armor that uses the equipment grounding conductor, that, that, that serves as the equipment grounding conductor. So that letter A has to be there if you're using MC cable like the one on the right where we're using the armor plus aluminum conductor as the equipment ground. On the left, you use MCI connectors. On the right, you use MCI-A connectors. So be quite careful when you're, uh, when you're selecting your connectors. It would really suck to wire a whole building, find out you use the wrong fittings. I can use cable trays as my equipment grounding conductor if it complies with 392.10 and 392.60. Look, this is a gigantic piece of metal. Of course you can use it as the equipment grounding conductor. It's going to have a very low impedance. Same concept with the framework of cable bus. Um, if you're not familiar with cable bus, uh, it's kind of a, a hybrid between busway and cable tray in that it's like a, a, it's like a cable tray because you can, you can take the, the covers off of it and you, you put the conductors in like a cable tray, but it's, like a, it, it's more like a busway because once you've done that, you close the covers, you never open it again. Right, so you would use this for like a 5,000 amp feeder circuit, something like that. It's actually uh, a, a really nice product. You can use other listed metal raceways or auxiliary gutters. So for example, here is a wireway. Uh, this is not a gutter. If this was bolted directly to the panel, then that might be a gutter, but it's the same product, a gutter and a wireway. The difference is just how you use it. You can't use a gutter as a raceway. You can use a wireway as a raceway. You can see that this is being used as a raceway, isn't it? It's not just being used to make the panel board bigger. That's where we would use a gutter. So either one, listed wireway or listed auxiliary gutter can be used as your equipment grounding conductor. So looking at this run of EMT, we go from this box down here with EMT into the wireway, down to the panel. Do I need a green wire inside of that installation? No, not required. You can use the EMT plus the wireway. 
Last but not least, we can use surface metal raceways that are listed for grounding. So take a look at the uh, surface metal raceway here. Um, maybe lift it up and put a little strap on there. But um, yeah, that does not require a green conductor inside of it as long as it's listed for grounding. So those are your different options for equipment grounding conductor. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.